Elgato is back at it again with a brand new stream deck. This one is the Stream Deck Plus. And I gotta tell you, it's one sexy mother. I absolutely love it. And because it's so different from the other stream decks, I actually believe it has a different purpose. So let me tell you what it is, what it does, what I like, what I dislike, and who I think this is for. To begin with, the box is actually bigger than most Elgato products. It's approaching a cube. Immediately when you open it, you're gonna be greeted with the Elgato logo. That is gonna be the user manual. And when you pull that out, boom, it's staring at you right in the face. It's the Stream Deck Plus. I really love the design. They kept it simple yet more complex than like the original Stream Deck. It is bulkier, it is heavier, it looks sexy. It's definitely not here to be a low profile device on your table in my opinion. It comes with a USB-C cable that you connect on the top back of it. And as you can see, the stand is pretty bulky and sits it at a fixed angle. If you don't wanna use this stand, you can unscrew those two little screws at the bottom. And talking about the bottom, we have a non-slip pad, which I haven't even peeled off yet. Oh, it's so clean. But there's also two little additional pads right there. So let's go to the front. We have eight bigger buttons. Then we're gonna have a display, which is touch sensitive. So technically counts as buttons too. Then we have four knobs, which are also buttons. They do not have an end stop, so it's infinite, but you do feel every single step of increment. So that's a pretty nice feeling. So I mentioned that the screen was a touch screen. It actually represents four buttons that you can press. And it will of course help you monitor some important information. One thing that it took me a while to figure out is that you can actually swipe the screen to get access to a whole new page with all new buttons. So when it comes to the software, there is a Stream Deck 6 is the new version. And this is the page for my regular Stream Deck and we can switch here. And as you can see, there's Corsair G keys. You can use the Stream Deck pedal. And of course, now the Stream Deck Plus. You do need to make sure that everything is upgraded and you're gonna see everything represented. It's gonna be our eight buttons. We're gonna have the screen and then we're gonna have the knobs. One thing to pay attention to is top right here, we're gonna have two tabs between keys and dials because you don't have the same options for the keys and the dials. So it's a good way to immediately figure out what you can and can't do. There's this pretty cool thing called a dial stack. And this basically is, I wanna call it the version of folders. Every time you press the button, it's gonna switch to another action and then you can control something else with it. For example, if I want to control my PC's multimedia and I want to control its volume, okay? But I want the same button to also control the brightness of the Stream Deck Plus. But let's say I also want to control my monitor, my headset, I would drag output actions here and I can just pick whatever I wanted to do. And for this type of action, you have the option to control the step size, the percentage of each increment. So if it's a high number, like 5%, I'm gonna have to do a smaller rotation to get it to 100%. Nice, so now that we have our dial stack, I can go back and if I press the button on the knob, it will switch to the other action. So you can control a whole lot of things using a single button on top of having multiple pages. You create new pages by clicking on the plus here. As you can see here, I have three pages and I'm just swiping in between them, right? So here I can have new actions. Let's say here I wanna control the player so I can pause play. Let's just populate this. And of course you have your keys and you can do whatever you want. I'm just randomly doing stuff. And then you just swipe to go from one to the other. Another important thing is that you get access with Wavelink by buying the Stream Deck Plus, meaning that you don't need any other audio Elgato gear. So you'll be able to separate all of your audio sources on top of controlling them with the Stream Deck Plus. Just make sure that you have the Wavelink plugin installed in your Stream Deck software. For example, I'm controlling it right now in real time. <laughs> and of course it works perfectly with no latency. Now one thing to know is that I actually use the original Stream Deck on a daily basis, mostly when I'm editing and when I'm live streaming. This screen looks way better. I don't know if it's higher res or if it's just brighter, but it looks way, way better. All the icons are perfectly clean, which is cool because I do my own custom icons, which you should watch my videos on that. I think I have like four. Talking about the screen, I almost forgot that you can actually customize the background of those screen buttons. All you have to do is go here and you can see uh, create new background and you can drag and drop any image in there. Now, the format is not square like a button. It's gonna be a two by one aspect ratio. So you can create your own pretty looking backgrounds, which made me go into Photoshop immediately to create mine, just so we could match that specific page. But if you wanna use any image, you can just click and this is a pretty cool method of cropping it. You can go here so you can center it vertically. You can center it horizontally, or you can just zoom out like that and zoom in. You just place it like that and boom. That's the background. It looks great in real life. Let me lower the brightness. As you can see, absolutely perfectly visible. Now it's not an 8K, you can still see the pixels, but still. And I guess we can immediately slide into things that I don't like. One of my biggest disappointments is 
when I changed the background, I made sure to check to see what kind of image file they wanted me to upload. So when I click image from file, I went under there and I saw GIF and I was like, please, please, please let it be animated because you can actually put animated GIFs as your normal buttons. So I hopped onto my computer, went into Premiere and I made this little animation. But sadly, as soon as I selected it, it wasn't moving. That being said, Elgato sent me an early access. I'm guessing this is something that they might implement in the future. If not, please, <laughs> that would be amazing. Another thing that I dislike, but not that much, is the click of the knobs. I keep complaining about clicks. The thing is, we are gamers. We are used to pressing things that are immensely satisfying to click. And I don't feel like this is one of those. It feels like a regular analog button. Like if you're in the music industry or if you just own like music gear, you're used to this. It's not awful, but I feel like we could have had something that is more satisfying. Another thing that I dislike, the fact that it doesn't come with an adjustable mount, it's either like this or you figure out a mount yourself, basically. One thing that I thought I disliked, but I ended up liking was the fact that at first, with the default profile that they give you, every button that you press was the equivalent of when you touch the screen. So I thought that it had to be that way. But as soon as you use the dial stack, for example, I'm going to press on the screen. You're going to see it's going to mute the master output and I'm going to press on the dial Then it's going to switch. So it's different and in that particular case. Case, I'm going to have a different function for the touch screen than the button on the dial. So it's all good. It's not a dislike. <laughs> and I don't think I need to mention, but the things that I liked is everything else that I mentioned, the, everything that I described. I like the fact that we have bigger buttons. I like the fact that the screen looks better. The fact that you can uh, use the dials to control pretty much anything, specific windows, specific software. The fact that it gives you access to Wavelink. The fact that you can swipe press the buttons, have different functions for the, the dial, the button on the dial, and then the screen. Of course, everything that is Elgato related can be controlled, including the lights and the camera and the microphones. The price in the US is $199, which I feel is like more than fair. In Europe right now, it's €229, Euros, which I also think is a good price, but I don't like that it's more expensive here. And finally, let's talk about who I think this is for. I do not believe this is for someone that is hardcore grinding software and needs like a macro pad. And let's said before, my use of the original Stream Deck is to have my hand on the macro pad that I don't have to look at and then press all of my shortcuts without even thinking about them. That's what I do when I'm editing videos. This particular Stream Deck, I don't think is for that purpose. But the way that it's built makes me think that this is kind of like your main producer gear, like your master mixer. If you're only live streaming, for example, this is great. I would say, okay, buy this first because you're going to need it more. When you're live streaming, you're playing games, you're not always hands-on on your stream deck. But from time to time, you're going to want to adjust your volume, switch the scene, go to a different page, press a button, things like that. But if you're doing video editing or something like that, you have to be hands on unless you really use your keyboard and you could use the dials to maybe zoom in and adjust your timeline and things like that. But personally, I don't see it. So this is like the producer gear that needs to be like standing tall on your desk and just controls everything. When I'm not live streaming, I'm probably going to use it to just launch applications. I'll probably have some automations on my computer, basically to keep you well organized and execute everyday tasks. So this might sound weird, but I would actually recommend you getting a normal Stream Deck plus the Stream Deck Plus. That is if you have the means, of course, but also if you are a full time content creator. So video editing, I would use the regular Stream Deck. And then for this, I would use it to basically direct everything. If you don't have any of them and you're wondering which one should you get first, again, if live streaming is the only thing you're going to do, get the Stream Deck Plus. The dials, the information on the screen, those are all going to help. If you know you're going to be editing a lot of videos way more than you're going to be live streaming, then go with a regular Stream Deck. And of course, if somehow you're an established content creator who's making money with their content, get both straight up. If you enjoy those custom icons, you can check out the video on screen right now. I teach you how to make them and then I give you the template for free. Also, follow me on Twitter because I'm going to be giving away some stuff too. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Go out there, make me proud, get level out.